So, ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome to the stage for his international stand-up comedy debut. I'm going to steal a line from Andrew Barnett and ask you to ask you to go eight shit crazy for Stephen J. Carpino. <laughs> Uh, you see that little dance I did right there? That's what people do when they see me on the street. They do that stupid fucking dance. <laughs> Three pointer! <laughs> you dribble before you shoot? Oh, I'm coming your way. Oh, I'm going away. Yeah, I hate your fucking guts. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't go up to somebody and go, you're that ballet teacher. <laughs> You're that grave digger. I wouldn't. Honestly. You're that plumber. You're that Catholic school priest. <laughs> Too much? Oh, you're that teacher from Knox. Oh, Okay, we're gonna clean it up here. All right, I brought my notes, so you know, <laughs> can all eat a bowl of dicks. I'm not professional. <laughs> came to Australia in 1988. No, came to Sydney in 1988. Came to Australia in 1986. My first city was Hobart, but when I first came to Sydney, they had rugby league, right? So the guy was like, um, so I'm in the elevator. He's like, um, oh, I was in my basketball gear. He said, you know, you love basketball. You know, I was used to people speaking out of the side of their mouth because I lived in Hobart for two years. <laughs> you know, speaking out of the store in the real world of Hobart. <laughs> so I was used to it. So a guy was like, yeah, did I have I was like, what? Did I have Excuse me? Did I have I was like, man, you're going to have to say it really slowly. He said, you're that basketballer. You fuck with. <laughs> I said, I, I, okay, I'll, I'll wear that. I said, what about you? You know, um, play the league. What? Uh, play the league. <laughs> You're gonna have to say that slow too. I play a bit a league. You fucking dickhead. <laughs> Got it. All right. But after I've been here for a while, I thought, okay, well, maybe I would have said, I get it, you fucking bogan. <laughs> or Westie, either one, but I didn't know what that was when I first moved to Sydney. So, you know, there was. There's my baptism to Australia and the slang. Not to mention when I first got to Hobart, and I, I naively said, you know, are you going to root for us? <laughs> the girl said, can you buy me a fucking drink first? <laughs> That's pretty much how it went. Yeah, I bought her a drink. She was, you know, but in Hobart, the rubies were pretty, pretty nasty. So anyway, yeah. all right. Here we go. Lose my way here. I'm 54 and single. Woo! Not Yeah, there you go. I can't see it. How are you doing, girl? <laughs> Not exactly how I kind of saw things going, but um, you know what can I say? I, you know I do okay. You know I I can talk. I've got a healthy conversation. Um, in my age demographic, things that I do are really impressive. You know I can cook. I can clean. I can hold a conversation. You know like you know what? What a great day! It's beautiful. It's sunny. The wind's blowing. It's a great day to try all your laundry. <laughs> Women love that shit. In their 40s. I'm like the fucking Michael Jackson. No, that's fine. <laughs> Let me take that back. I'm the fucking Michael Jordan of women over 40. I love that. Because I can clean clothes, I can iron, I can cook, 
I could go to the grocery store. I don't need a checklist. I can just go up there and get my stuff, and it's pretty impressive to the chicks. As a matter of fact, I do okay because there's not a whole lot of competition with the Australian guys, honestly. <laughs> you guys are, is my favorite word in Australia. You guys are fucked. <laughs> Let me kind of tell you how I would break it down a little bit. I'd say, oh, God, what's that what you're wearing? It's just really subtle and nice. It's, you know, it takes your breath away. It's not overwhelming. Oh, gosh, that's, I don't even know what women's perfume, but that's what it is. Oh, that, that's really nice. It's nice of you to notice. Yeah. Then I get, you know, get a little drunk, come up behind him. Okay. How you doing, sweetheart? I'm just kind of a little whistle, a little something. Do you dance a little bit? You know, I got some good songs coming on a little bit later. <laughs> yeah, I'm really drunk. I'm gonna sing to him. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. Put on your red dress <laughs> and some of those high heels yeah. and some of that sweet perfume. Yeah. It sure smells good on you. Slide on that lipstick <laughs> and let all your hair down. Cause baby, when we get through. I'm going to shut you doors. I got a little carried away there, my friend. Goodness. Man. Man. I should have worn my son's pants. They're small. He said those look good. They're like uh, metrosexual or something like that. I'm not quite sure. They just look a bit short to me. But yeah, you know, things have changed a little bit. But I must admit, I use my kids. To get the ladies. I do their good-looking kids, they're popular, you know, what can I say? You know, like it's like Charlie Sheen said, two and a half men, they're better than like a fucking puppy. You get a lot of attention through, you know, good-looking kids that say please and thank you and pardon me and uh, here, let me get that door for you. So, uh, you know, I thought, come on kids, come on up here, just sit in the front row, come on up. <laughs> Toilet seat 
pizza, <laughs> toilet paper. I mean, you've got toilet paper, but you've got to go find it. It's in a drawer or something. You could be sitting down and going, where's that toilet paper? We don't give a fuck. <laughs> That's how our place is. But, you know, we got a condom dispenser right in the middle of the hallway. It's the dad bed. It is the dad bed. But that's how we get down. But I tell you what, I'm having a great time. Thanks to Barnaby. Thanks for everybody to come out. And I'd like to leave you with something. The party is wherever the Carfinos are at.